Great. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, the uh, Tuesday, December 14th meeting of uh, Trent Hills Council. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order at 9.31 a.m. This uh, council meeting is being conducted in person and members of council will be present in the council chambers. At this time, in-person attendance by members of the public is not permitted. The meeting will be live streamed on the municipality's meeting portal and YouTube channel. The video recording will be uploaded to the municipality of Trent Hills website following the meeting. We have the adoption of the agenda. We resolve that the agenda for the council meeting December the 14th, 2021 be received and adopted as amended to withdraw item, item 7N, report planning 2021-84 re 188-1566 Ontario <coughs> Limited, ex exemption from the condominium approval process. Can I get a mover and seconder, please? So Kathy and uh, Jean, all in favor? That's carried. Is there any disclosure of uh, interest? Seeing none, we'll carry on. If something arises, please uh, notify the clerk. We have minutes of the council meeting held on November the 23rd, 2021. Be resolved that the minutes of the council meeting held on November the 23rd, 2021 be received and adopted as presented. Mover and seconder, please. Ken and Rick, uh, any discussion on those? All in favor? That's carried. Uh, we have minutes of the Heritage Advisory Committee meeting held November the 24th, 2021, and the public hearings, public meetings, meeting held on December the 7th, 2021. We have four motions. We resolved that the minutes of the Heritage Advisory Committee meeting held November the 24th, 2021, and the public hearings, public meetings, meeting held December the 7th, 2021, be received. Can I get a mover and seconder for that, please? Ken, Mike, uh, any discussion? Uh, Gene? Oops. Mr. Mayor, I got a concern with the uh, Blue Marsh. You want to pull uh, your speaker and your, your microphone down to speak there? I don't have the information in front of me, but uh, I noticed that in the remarks from the Heritage that the Blue Marsh uh, designation seems to have come to a halt. And I feel uh, disappointed in that. I didn't go looking to see where 21 Front Street should be, but uh, I would hope that the designation could be still put up someplace in town to recognize the efforts of this man. Uh, it, that uh, people, I know there are local people that have worked to bring this uh, presentation to to a. To, a, to an end, but uh, this is not the end that they wanted, I'm sure. Uh, but I don't know the details of why nobody knows where 21 Front Street should be. Uh, Doug, go ahead. Your Worship, um, 21 Front Street, it's not clear whether it's north or south um, in Mr. Peter's report that went to the Heritage Committee, what is still in place is Council's direction to staff to do a commemorative uh, plaque, probably to be located at a gateway entrance to the municipality. So there will still be some form of recognition, yes. um, but there won't be a plaque on a building somewhere. And Heritage had some extensive discussion over Mr. Marsh, which is available through the video on the website and the motion is uh, standing alone further in our agenda. It's one of the additional motions for this item. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we have a move and a seconder. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Council, uh, Jean, would you turn your microphone off please? Oh, sorry. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I just have a question. It's re uh, regarding the first motion, which uh, removing a property from the cultural heritage uh, register. Once a property is added to the registrar, are there requirements or standards that the property owner needs to keep uh, properties in? Uh, 
Lynn, do you know the uh, <coughs> answer, or do I, should we get a hold of it? <coughs> Sorry, Jim? Uh, I do see that Jim is on the line. Um, I don't know that there's anything specific to that situation, <coughs> but the same rules that would apply in terms of property standards for all properties would be the case, regardless of whether or not it's registered. Right. I just mm -hmm. didn't know if there was a, a specific level that it needed to be kept once it was on the, on the register. Yeah, we can certainly look into that. <coughs> Um, well, I, I, I believe, yeah, am I on? Okay. Yeah, I, I, yes, yeah, I guess there is. Um, I can't explain it, but I am familiar with one situation where a property was removed because of an addition that was placed on something that was deemed, that was registered and, and so on. So it takes considerable discussion. In this case, it was a request by the owners, but, uh, um, I'm sure that, that uh, Jim can, can better outline um, what would be the key points if the, if the committee were to take action. I would, I would guess primarily it would be more based on complaint, um, if somebody recognized something wasn't up to standards, but um, I'll leave it up to staff to clearly outline that. Is Jim, is Jim uh, on the call? Uh, on the line? I'm here, Mr. Mayor. I can, uh, through you to council, indicate that, uh, as the CAO indicated, the uh, property standards, conditions, and bylaw that apply to all properties would apply to any um, property on the register. Uh, note that the register is different from being designated. Uh, the register simply recognizes perhaps um, the age of the building. Uh, in this case, it was recognized as a former Orange Hall, but it was certainly not an architectural, um, had no architectural features and it's come into disrepair. And uh, the farm owner on which the property uh, sits has asked that it be uh, demolished. Staff supports that and the committee has supported it. Thanks, Jim, very much. That good, Mike? Okay, we have a mover and a seconder for the motion. All in favor? That's carried. <clears throat> Second motion is be resolved pursuant to Heritage Advisory Committee motion number HAC-211124-5 that the former Orange Hall located at 1696 County Road 38, former township of Seymour, be removed from the Municipal Cultural Heritage Properties Register and a demolition permit be issued for the structure due to the deteriorated condition can I get a mover and seconder for that, please? Moved by Kathy. Seconded by Ken. Any discussion? I think we've already had it. All in favor? And that's carried. Number three, <clears throat> be resolved pursuant to the Heritage Advisory Committee motion number HAC 211124-7 that the home of Lou Marsh at 21 Front Street, Camelford, not be included in the municipality of municipalities heritage register or have a heritage awareness plaque created due to the fact that 21 front street Calvert cannot be identified and may no longer exist a mover and seconder for that please moved by gene tracking by rick all in favor and that's carried and the last motion to be resolved pursuant to the heritage advisory committee motion number hac 211124-8 that the Heritage Grant Program, Heritage Grant application from John Belton, re <coughs> repair and rehabilitation of 12 original stained glass windows at 13546 County Road 24, Warkworth, be approved in the amount of $5,000. Moved by Kathy, seconded by Ken. Um, any discussion? All in favor? <coughs> and that's carried, thank you very much. We are at deputations, we have none. <clears throat> and now we're at uh, long-term service awards for 2021. And uh, our CAO, Lynn, will speak to that. Thank you. Um, every year at this time, as you know, we recognize the achievements of our staff who've reached a milestone anniversary with the municipality. Of staff, 
and also provide a way for the municipality to express our sincere appreciation and for their dedication to their job and for their part in making Trent Hills what it is today. Unfortunately, we're still not able to meet in person uh, with all of our honorees, so we have prepared a presentation that showcases the special talents and contributions of each of our staff receiving a long-term service award in 2021. difficulties. <laughs> Shall I just begin? Are you able to manually advance them? Oh, okay. But not on the screen. Okay, so we'll begin with our five year recipients or honorees. First is uh, Gus Churchill, um, who is celebrating five years. As I said, Gus is a alternate crossing guard with the municipality, and he is always willing to assist at any of the various crossings through at Trent Hills. Next uh, five-year honoree is Alan Firth, who is <clears throat> a wastewater collection treatment plant operator too. Alan takes great pride and ownership in uh, the wastewater facilities and as well in his, is in his daily duties. He's always eager to solve any problems that may arise and achieving optimum facility operations always comes first for Alan. Also celebrating five years this year is Troy Stevens, who is our wastewater collection treatment plant head operator. Uh, Troy has met the responsibility of being the senior operator in the wastewater division with a competency that would be difficult to match. He gladly accepts all challenges and has ensured continued compliance of facility operations in some extremely difficult situations. Next, the 10-year long-term service award honorees. First is John Cunningham, who is a dedicated crossing guard with the municipality. He's a very conscientious employee who can be found at the Bridge Street and Margaret Street crossing, crosswalk. Families enjoy greeting John each morning on their way to school. Jeff Hay, also celebrating 10 years, is the Parks and Recreation lead hand. In the winter, Jeff works out of the Camelford Arena, and in the summer months, uh, Jeff supervises park staff. He is very friendly and approachable to the user groups and is very knowledgeable in the arena industry. Jeff's a member of the Health and Safety Committee, where his input and ideas for improvement are always appreciated. Peter Burnett is celebrating 10 years. Uh, Peter started his career with the municipality as a recreation manager, and in 2015, Peter became the community recreation officer. Peter is dedicated to his position and is directly responsible for many improvements to the recreation amenities throughout Trent Hills. He is knowledgeable, extremely conscientious when approaching all tasks and challenges, and is always quick to lend a hand to other departments and coworkers. Celebrating 20 years is Neil Tanner, who's also a crossing guard with the municipality. Neil is a friendly face you see at the crosswalk at Bridge Street in Hastings. Thirty year milestone is being celebrated by Joanne Monroe. Joanne started her career with the township of Campbellford Seymour as a receptionist secretary for the recreation department working out of the Campbellford Seymour Arena in 1991. And following amalgamation, uh, Joanne became the accounts clerk. Her organizational skills, hard work, and knowledge throughout multiple departments have made her a valuable resource for all staff. Her 30 years a true testament to her dedication and loyalty to our municipality. Her contribution to the municipality is truly appreciated. And just as a side note, staff always look forward to Joanne's delicious baking and dishes at potluck lunches. She's quite an amazing cook. 
Our final honoree is Neil Allenson, who is celebrating 35 years. To say that Neil is a dedicated employee is quite an understatement, particularly at uh, the 35-year mark. It is a significant achievement. He started his career with Seymour Township as an equipment operator in 1986. Neil was also the assistant supervisor at Seymour Township, and following amalgamation, Neil became the road's lead hand at the Percy Public Workshard. In 2008, Neil was awarded his current position of Manager of Roads and Urban Services. He's an invaluable resource for the municipality. He knows Trent Hills, roads, streets, culverts, ditches, bridges, like the back of his hand. He applies his extensive knowledge, local, local experience, and high level of personal integrity to everything that he does. Neil oversees the largest and arguably the most complex department, and he makes it look easy. As an essential member of management team, Neil is generous with his time and assistance to other municipal departments as well as members of the public. So congratulations to Neil. And congratulations to all of the 2021 Long-Term Service Award recipients. Um, and thank you for all that you do. It is sincerely appreciated. Each of the uh, honorees will receive their individual gifts um, at some point this week. Thank you. Thanks, Lynn. And, uh, and I'd like to add my congratulations to, uh, to staff. Um, we're very fortunate at uh, Trent Hills to, to have the staff we have that are dedicated and uh, responsive to the, uh, the needs of our um, constituents. So uh, I hope they um, enjoy their, uh, their, their, their success and, the, and their, uh, they, they go forward with uh, uh, the same uh, zeal as they have when you look at it from five to 35 years. Yeah. Um, I have reports from municipal officers. We have uh, finance 2021-022, read the 2022 draft budget response to uh, comment submissions. And it's be resolved that staff report finance 2021-022 from Valerie Nesbitt, director of finance treasurer, read the 2022 draft budget response to comment submissions, be received for information. And uh, do you wish to speak to that, Valerie? Thank you, Mayor Crate and members of Council. So just to uh, summarize, yes, we, um, as Council is aware, we tabled the budget on November the 6th. It came back before Council on November the 23rd. We received five uh, comments, uh, submissions, and uh, because a number of the submissions were similar in nature, what we opted to do was provide a more fulsome response to address each and every one of the items that was uh, mentioned in, in the submission. So what you have before you within the staff report are um, the subject matter that uh, that were addressed in the submissions uh, by by department or area of service and staff's response to each one of those and just uh, as a high level overview if it's okay with council I'll just touch on those so within water and wastewater uh, the comment submission that was received was referred to staff as it was uh, deemed more operational in nature uh, from an administrative perspective in terms of public notice we referred uh, members of the public to the staff report that was provided to council and approved by council uh, with respect to how we post for public notice of the budget and other items. Within the fire department, uh, we addressed risk assessment and fleet primarily. And within emergency management, we, we um, addressed the issue of how do we deal with floods from a financial perspective as well as an operational perspective in terms of the um, annual exercise. In recreation, we dealt with a number of issues from lighting to sports fields, fleet and equipment, uh, usage at multiple facilities, uh, grants that have been applied for where there are specific items that are you know, where pending approval is um, unknown at this time, trails, Crowbridge Park, and of course the Wellness Center. Um, in another sort of more broad category, we address long-term care Homes Act um, as a source of revenue that is not eligible for this municipality. And then in roads and, and urban services, we primarily addressed fleet uh, as that was part of the public comment submission. 
Um, at the very end of the report, we addressed the, uh, the, the situation that was raised as a concern for the Campbellford Library facility. So um, staff are available if council has any further questions beyond the content of the report. Councillor English. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would really like to thank uh, Valerie and, the, and all staff members that commented on this. This was, uh, to me, a very valuable tool for all of us. And uh, it was just something that I wanted to print off and keep in my back pocket. I thought it was uh, very well done, very well answered. And thank you so much for the time and effort put in that, Valerie. Thank you, Rick. Um, if there's no other, there's no other names on my board, so I guess nobody else has any questions. Um, um, <clears throat> we have mover and seconder on that. Doug? Okay. Can I get him? Uh, it be resolved to staff report. 2021-022 from Valerie Nesbitt, Director of Finance Treasury, the 2022 draft budget response to comments, submissions, be received for information. <clears throat> Mover and seconder, I have Ken and Rick. All in favor? That's carried. <clears throat> and we're now at the report finance 2021-023, the 2022 water and wastewater budget approval. Valerie? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, we have no updates to that budget document. All of the numbers uh, remain status quo, and so it is there for Council's uh, consideration. Any questions from Council on that report? If not, I'll read the resolution. <clears throat> we resolved the staff report finance 2021-023 from Valerie Nesbitt. Director of Finance, Treasurer, read the 2022 water and wastewater budget approval be received for information that the 2022 water budget in the amount of $2,769,529 be approved and that the 2022 wastewater budget in the amount of $2,897,896 be approved, that the appropriate bylaw to approve the 2022 water and wastewater budget be brought forward for council's consideration and that the appropriate bylaw to approve 2022 water and wastewater rates, fees and charges be brought forward for council's consideration. And I get a mover and seconder for that, please. Mike and Kathy, thank you. Any further questions? All in favor? That is carried. We are at now report finance 2021-024, the 2022 municipal budget approval. Valerie. Thank you, Your Worship. So uh, the November 6th budget document, uh, we committed to coming back to council with several updates. And so everything within the budget document remains status quo from up to and including page 57. And so I'm just, uh, we've provided up on the screen uh, pages 58 to 63 of the budget presentation, which really just are updates to the slide. So this is a new slide. We had it last year as well, and it really summarizes um, how the tax dollars for 2022 are intended to be spent by each area of service. So you can see that transportation is the majority of the tax dollar that, that uh, the residents of Trent Hills will support, uh, followed by recreation and then policing and so on and so forth. So we, we like to just give this as an overview so, so that uh, members of council and the public can see that as well. Sorry. Uh, as the, far as the assessment information on November the 6th and the 23rd, at, that, at those uh, meetings we did not have the assessment information returned from MPAC. And so, I just want to talk a little bit about the postponement of the reassessment. As Council is aware, they postponed the reassessment for 2021 taxation year. Um, we had known at the last presentation uh, that we were going to have a postponement again for 2022, and then subsequently they've announced another postponement for taxation year 2023. Um, MPAC does continue to do their work in the field. Um, if you've uh, sustained some sort of a change to your property uh, for, through building permit activity, additions, uh, demolitions, all of those types of things are being picked up by MPAC. They're quite active in the field. 
um, all of that information, uh, they receive that um, from the municipality uh, as those permits are going out to property owners. Uh, so the next slide then, we wanted to demonstrate for you the taxable changes. We indicated in our first presentation, we estimated an increase of approximately 1% on the residential tax class. Overall, the total taxable assessment increase is actually 1.37% for 2022 over 2021. Um, this, uh, obviously, it, it's not a year of reassessment, so current value assessment is not being returned on the roll. So what you see as the 1.37 represents that activity that I just spoke about with additions to uh, properties and, and the like, new homes, et cetera. And so again, it just results in 1.37% in, in terms of a taxable assessment, or sorry, in terms of assessment increase for 2022. And we've provided council with an overview of the um, various tax classes for 2022. And again, residential is your largest at 79.4%, followed by farm at 14.3 and so on. We did see a, a bit of commercial activity in 2021, whereby we had uh, uh, several years of commercial activity uh, being caught up and they were actually reductions. So what happens in the overall assessment is it mitigates those increases at the same time when you see multiple year adjustments coming down. So what does it all mean in the end uh, when we combine the total budget with the assessed values? Um, we will address tax rates at a future council date, but for the purposes of estimating what taxes will be at this point in time with the budget and the return assessment, we are estimating that for every $100,000 of assessment for municipal purpose, it results in $21.48 or 2.71%. So if you have an assessed property, a property with an assessed value of 250,000, it would equate to $53.69 year over year. And that's for a municipal portion only, county and the education forces, portions of tax will be um, brought forward to council, as I say, at, at a future date when those tax rates are known. And as we have in the past, uh, we've provided a few examples for councils uh, just to demonstrate the impact of that. So we've put, uh, we've changed the slide a little bit. Um, so the first one that you'll see is the 100,000, where we talked about the $21 year over year, 2.71%. We've given the second example of $250,000. Again, no change in assessed value, resulting in a $54 annual change. And often I'm asked by members of council about, well, where did you come up with the 250,000? And this year I've opted to uh, provide for you uh, some of the assessment information that is, um, within the Ontario Municipal Partnership Fund, the OMPF grant allocation, they provide to us a number of municipal uh, fiscal indicators. And within that fiscal indicator, they have uh, the Trent Hills uh, assessed value and they have a median assessed value. So what you see there is year over year, the Trent Hills assessment from 246,755 in the third row down and it increasing by $1,405 going to 248,160. A property with those assessed values, they would sustain a, a $64 increase year over year. And then um, you also have the median example of 287 going to 289 with an assessment value change of $2,000 or $78 annually year over year. The rest of the examples are properties that are uh, handpicked. We follow those throughout the course of uh, time. And it's just demonstrating for you that if there is no change because of the, the postponement of the reassessment, um, there is no change in assessed value for the vast majority of the examples. However, there are a couple in there that, that have had changes, and those would be as a result of um, supplementary or omitted assessments being added to the roll. And so those ones, obviously, they, they start to increase, and those, those in-year changes become rolled over into the, into the next taxation year. So, You'll see this, and then eventually their base comes up to what you see as the 2022 assessment year over year. So that just shows you the, uh, the as I say, the, the majority of the properties sustaining a 2.71% increase if there's been no change in the assessed value year over year. Um, I think this is just... Uh, Finished. It's finished. So there's just one more item that I would like to uh, talk to council about, which is it was addressed on page six of the original budget document, which is to do with grants. 
And at the time of the presentation in November, November 6th and the 23rd, we had a number of grant um, grants that were not finalized or pending approval. And I just wanted to bring to Council's attention that on December the 8th, the province announced the Ontario um, Community Infrastructure Fund OCIF allocation. It is not included in this budget document, um, but we would like to come forward to Council at, a, at the next Council meeting to provide you with some options on how to spend those funds or make recommendations. Um, the allocation for 2022 has increased substantially by 610,000. Uh, the municipality of Trent Hills will be receiving 1.2 million. There is a long list of infrastructure needs, um, and this, these funds are dedicated for core infrastructure, being roads, bridges, water, and wastewater. So um, if council is okay with that, we would like to bring that forward in a separate report and address that accordingly. Thanks, Bauer. Any question, questions from council? Uh, Rick? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just a question on the on the roads budget, and this is just something I thought about a few days ago. I had forgotten all about it. And maybe you can help me out here, Len. Um, remember we had a delegation from Bonnie Overland, kind of a passionate delegation about a new sidewalk. I forget the name of the street now. Was it included in this budget? Um, through you, Mayor. Um, no, it's not. The um, action items that came out of that uh, deputation were um, to look at the options available. So I don't even think there had been a cost estimate done at that point. So it wasn't included in the budget and also to bring forward a policy on how we deal with these sections of streets that do not have a sidewalk and sort of under what conditions would council consider um, adding them after the fact. Um, as we discussed at the time, with development now, the sidewalks are always included, so, but there was a number of others that were identified at the same time. So there isn't a budget item in there at this point, no. Uh, yeah, I just thought that was something very important. I, I thought it was a real safety hazard, and, and, and I, I, at the time, did support getting it done, but uh, maybe this is something we consider with this uh, funding that Valerie was talking about, possibly. I just don't think. Thank you. Thank you, Rick and Valerie. Would you uh, like to respond to that, or we just we'll put it in the list of things to look at? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Yes, we can certainly add that to the list of items um, as well. Perhaps uh, uh, the manager of roads and urban services would would have some some comments with respect to that section of sidewalk as well. Thank you. Michael, you've changed your mind, or your question was answered? No, just last. Oh, well, I must have hit it with my wrist, I guess. Sorry. Thank you, Worship. Uh, thank you, Valerie and, and staff, for doing the work over this last little bit of time. It's nice to see uh, a little bit more information from the assessments that come in that give us a little more solid information on what we're able to, to bring, bring forward. So we're bringing it down by about a half a percent, which is is a nice thing to see over uh, that that hundred thousand assessment uh, area. Also, a nice to see that recommitment, that, like you said, to the uh, OSIF fund and and uh, the increase from the province to be able to do those important infrastructure uh, projects in the future. It would have been nice to see it on the on the books this year, but I know it's we have projects that coming up that we'll be able to use that for wisely and and take a better look at what we need to do. So we'll be able to see those advantages in, in next year and, and our projects that we can come forward with and uh, it'll relieve some of the budgeting for years to come. So it's good to see. Thank you, Valerie. Uh, anything else from council? I'll read the resolution. Be resolved that staff report finance 2021-024 from Valerie Nesbitt, Director of Finance Treasurer, read the 2022 municipal budget approval be received for information, and that the 2022 municipal budget <coughs> in the amount of 27,335,101 included, including a tax levy requirement of $14,731,400 $731,407 be approved and that the appropriate bylaw to approve the 2022 municipal budget be brought forward for council's consideration. 
mover by moved by Ken, seconded by Rick. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Report um, from the clerk at uh, clerk 2021-013. Read the 2022 fees and changes. Ch I'm sorry, fees and charges by law. Um, Doug. Thank you, Your Worship. The report in front of Council is just a high-level report to identify those changes which are in the draft bylaw <coughs> attached to today's uh, agenda with respect to our fees and charges and where we are looking at changing them. Um, for the cemetery one, for the uh, memorialization markers, care and maintenance, while that has not been flagged in previous bylaws, it has always been required. Uh, Bereavement Authority of Ontario has increased the required contribution amounts effective January 1, 2022, so that's why those were included. Um, the municipal addressing signs, our costs are increasing from our supplier, so it is simply passing those along. The other fees have been identified by the various departments along with the building fees which Council had the public meeting last week on. Um, I believe those uh, that is a high-level overview. If there are specific requests from Council, the senior management on the Zoom call would be able to answer their respective departments. Mr. Tully? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I guess my question had to do with the Schedule D and the bereavement, because my understanding is the care and maintenance is 40% of the price of a lot, so these increases that are changing in 2022, which I'm not aware of the 40% increasing, but it, as you indicated, it is. I'm just wondering how these $100, $200, $400 prices were calculated, because I believe that percentage that the care and uh, maintenance fund would have included those. So. Uh, through your worship to Councillor Tully, two different things. Care and, uh, care and maintenance on the lot is uh, 200, uh, depends on the size of the grave, but it's a set fee or 40% of the price, which ours already is. When you get into the memorialization markers, there is also a care and maintenance charge that must be applied based on the size of the uh, monument that is placed. So dependent on the footprint of the headstone, that depends on what that dollar figure is that is then has to be contributed to care and maintenance for those. Mr. English. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the 911 signs, there's a $30 one and a $55 one. Through your worship to Councillor English, yes. The $55 one is the signs that are placed in the rural areas um, because they include the post. In For $55, you get the sign, the post, and municipal staff install it. The $30 signs are the signs inside of the urban areas, and it's just the sign blade that is placed on the house, um, or in the instance of a replacement blade, so it could be a replacement blade in the rural area, it's just the cost of the blade. It's not, uh, there's no um, post, and staff do not install on the houses. We just install in the rural areas. Thank you. I'll read the resolution. Be resolved that staff report <coughs> CLK 2021-013 from Doug Irwin, Director of Legislative Services Clerk. Read the 2022 fees and charges bylaw. Be received for information. Mover and seconder for that, please. Moved by Jean. Seconded by Mike. All in favor? That's carried. We have report rec 2021-05, read the Hastings Community Outdoor Rink update. <coughs> I'll read the resolution. <coughs> Be resolved in staff report rec 2021-05 from Peter Burnett, Community Recreation Officer, 
Read the Hastings Community Outdoor Rink Operation Update be received for information that the Hastings Ice Rink Committee be permitted to operate a community maintained outdoor rink for the 21-22 winter season on municipal lands located at the northwest corner of Bridge Street North and Front Street West in Hastings that the Hastings Ice Rink Committee enter into an agreement with the Municipality of Trent Hills for the operation of the outdoor rink and yard hydrant for the 2021-2022 winter season and that the Hastings Ice Rink Committee be notified of Council's decision under the Community Recreation Officer's signature. Can I get a mover and seconder for that, please? Moved by Mike, seconded by Jean. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Michael? Thank you, Worship. Don't really have a question. This is a really good group of volunteers that are, are working good, uh, with the with staff, and the staff are are uh, working well with them to bring their projects forward. And, and there's some mutual benefits that are in this report for both the municipality and for that volunteer group. But uh, the rink is is like the report says, and and uh, Peter's alluded that it, it's a great addition to the community, especially in, in times where we can't do everything that we want to do. So glad to see this report coming forward to bring some concrete um, support for that group and, and keep it going forward. And we're going to hope for some nice weather. Yeah, you know, about minus 10 all winter long, just to keep it perfect would be great. Thanks, Mike. Um, anyone else? Okay. Um, we have a mover and seconder. Uh, all in favor? That's carried. Um, we're now at report PWK 2021-19 recite preparation tender. We resolve the staff report PWK 2021-19 from Scott White, General Manager of Infrastru Infrastructure Renewal and Public Works Administration site Preparation Tender uh, ITT REC SPR CRWC 2021 16 for the Camelford Recreational and Wellness Center be received for information. And that the bid from Drain Brothers Group for tender ITT REC SPR CRWC 2021 16 be accepted at their bid price of $737,352.14. Plus HST, and at the amount of one hundred fifty thousand dollars be included in the overall project budget as a contingency to offset any additional construction and construction administration costs. That the clerk execute the appropriate contract documents with Dream Brothers Group. That all bidders be advised of council's decision under the general manager's the general manager of infrastructure renewal and public works administration signature. I get a mover and seconder for that, please. Moved by Jean, seconded by Rick. Any discussion? Mr. English. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, certainly a wide range of uh, prices, that's for sure. Uh, great to get that company for that price, I think. Uh, question to Lynn, will that be started this winter? Uh, the site work, actually, Scott could probably answer that better, but the, the intention is for it to start uh, early in 2022, the site work, and uh, the next council meeting in January, we hope to bring forward the award for the design build contract as well. So we'll definitely be starting in 2022, yes. Uh, my apologies, Len, I didn't see Scott on the screen. Well, there. that's okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Maybe he has something to add. Sorry, Scott. Uh, also, I was going to add is that we would be would be starting probably as soon as we can get it awarded. Um, so I think they would want to move in probably even this month, prior to Christmas, um, just before you know weather weather turns or gets uh, a little colder with frost and those types of things. Thanks, Scott. Um, Gene. Yes. Uh, just referring to some of the dialogue about the, what they're going to do with the site is the the separation of the product is it going to be like a screening process and and crushing or is it or is it not that uh, refined of a separation project 
Um, so what's going to happen basically where the proposed footprint of the new rec and wellness center is all of that material has to be removed and some in some cases it's upwards of you know five meters deep um it's just been put in there randomly it's not good material that is removed out and we're going to utilize all of the uh, rock that has been brought there from the dam uh project nearby and basically crush it up into anything from two inch to sort of six inch and put it in there probably a, a close to a meter and a half deep um, and bring it up to a below footing grade for the design build project to final. So yes, there will be crushing, there'll be screening, and there's there's just a lot of material to be kind of moved back and forth on the site. Kathy? Should I be red? There we go, there we go. I was looking for the red. Um, no, um, my, my comments, I guess, were very similar to Councillor English, is that I think that uh, there are a lot that are very anxious to see some work out there, um, and I understand the difficulties that have taken place, but the sooner we can get at least something going, the uh, individuals can, can um, see, I think we can keep going on the the excitement that was there in the beginning that has kind of waned a bit and and i also want to to thank staff for and hope that they will continue to keep things updated on the website um i'm really sad to see a lot of the misinformation circulating that it is only it is an arena and it is um it has a pool and it has another of many other amenities that make it a true wellness center and I think that's what everyone is working towards. And, um, and I just hope that the sooner we can get there, the better it's going to be for the entire community. I know individuals who would have benefited from um, using that facility already. So um, the sooner we get it there, the better. And um, good luck with your work this winter, Scott. Thank you. Um, the, uh, I read the resolution. Uh, all in favor? That's carried. We're now at report PWK 2021, uh, the 2021 third quarter operational report for water and wastewater. We resolve that staff report PWK 2021-20 from Scott White, General Manager of Infrastructure Renewal and Public Works Administration. Read the 2021 third quarter operations report for water and wastewater be received for information. And I get a mover and seconder for that, please. Moved by Kathy, seconded by Mike. Any discussion? Uh, Kathy? Yeah, Scott, I noticed there was some work done on the, um, on the service on Percy Boom Road. Um, was that um, improvements or was that a new service? And I guess my question would be, are we continuing to see individuals um, hooking up to that service or is it just status quo right now? Um. Yes, it was actually a new installation for a new build um, there. And we still continue to have, you know, periodically um, services connected along that entire line, whether it's on, you know, vacant lots or, or current or homes that are already there that, that want to connect on Highway 30 and Percy Boom. So, yes, we see a, a number. I'm, I'm going to, you know, hazard to guess around an average of probably, you know, five to six connections kind of a year. Thanks, Scott. Um, we Read the resolution. Uh, all in favor? That's carried. We're now at report planning 2021 78, severance consent application B52 2021. We resolved the staff report planning 2021 78 from Liz Stillman, planning coordinator, re severance consent application B52 2021 at 2686 11th line east, the 11th line east former township of Seymour, uh, George and, and Francis Mangos be received for information. And that severance consent application B52-2021 to create two separate parcels which have merged in title be approved uh, with conditions as noted in the report. Can I get a mover and seconder for that, please? Mo moved by Jean, seconded by Ken. Any discussion? All in favor? That's carried. We're now at planning 2021-79, severance consent application B53-2021. 
be resolved in staff report planning 2021-79 from Liz Stillman, planning coordinator, reseverance consent application B53-2021 263 Devils Valley Road 315 Devils Valley Road, former township of Seymour, Eleanor and Gary Bennett be received for information and that severance consent application B53-2021 to create two separate parcels from which have merged in title and a lot line adjustment, a lot addition in which the severed portion will merge with the adjacent lands uh, be approved with the conditions as set out in the report. Can I get a mover, Kathy and uh, Rick? Uh, all in favor? Thank you. We're now at planning 2021-80, uh, severance consent application B54-2021. Be resolved that staff report planning 2021-80 from Liz Stillman, Planning Coordinator, read the severance consent application B54-2021, concession for part of lots 23 and 24, 229 Skinkle Road, former township of Percy, Lance and Eva Petherick be received for information, and that severance consent application B54-2021 for application to create one new parcel of residential building purposes be approved with the conditions as noted in the report. Moved by Rick, seconded by Ken. All in favor? That's carried. We are planning 2021-81, severance consent application B55-2021. <clears throat> be it resolved as staff report planning 2021-81 from Liz Stillman, planning coordinator, reseverance consent application B55-2021, concession 11, parts of lot 11 and 12, 46 Northwood Drive to 52 Northwood Drive, former township of Percy, Keith Doucette, Rod McIsaac, be received for information. That severance consent application B55-2021 for a lot line adjustment or a lot addition in which the severed portion will merge with the adjacent lands be approved with the conditions as noted in the report. Get a mover and seconder for that, please. Moved by Rick, second by Mike. All in favor? That's carried. We're now at planning 2021 82, minor variance application A02. 2021 be resolved the staff report planning 2021-82 from Liz Stillman planning coordinator re minor variance application A02-2021 152 Petherick's Road Petherick Petherick's Road uh, Barnaby Marshall be received for information that minor variance application A02-2021 A to permit the construction of a new utility shed being approximately 10 by 16 uh, on a vacant lot directly across from the primary, the applicant's primary property be approved. Moved by Kathy, seconded by Jean. All in favor? That's carried. We are planning 2021-83, request from the estate of William B.G. Humphreys be resolved as staff report planning 2021-83 from Jim Peters, Director of Planning and Development. Re further correspondence regarding the request, request of the estate of William B.G. Humphreys to the municipality of Trent Hills be received for information. And that the revised proposal received November the 12th, 2021 from Don McQuig, Executor, Estate of William Robert Boyce Humphreys be respectfully declined as it does not meet the requirements of Trent Hills Policy ADM-009, naming of corporate assets. That council continues to support its decision from May 18, 2021, as documented, documented in motion number THC-210516-20, and that the estate of William Robert Boyce Humphreys be advised of council's decision under the Director of Planning and Development signature. Can I get a mover and seconder for that, please? Moved by Kathy. 
Second by Ken. All in favor? That's carried. Um, item over at number O, which is a report of planning 2021-85, re 2021 progress report for cat care initiative. Be resolved that staff report planning 2021-85 from Liz Stillman, planning coordinator, read the 21 progress report from the cat care initiative be received for information and that the funds as approved within the 2021 budget be released as identified in the 2021 progress report from the cat care initiative. Can I get a mover and seconder for that? Kathy, Mike, all in favor? Oh, sorry. Um, Kathy? No, I, thank you. Um, I just want to say that that's probably one of the most complete, detailed, um, informative reports that I've seen in a long time from any group or organization that has received assistance from the municipality. I think they've, if, if they conduct their business in the same way they manage their reports, they're doing an excellent job. And from what I hear, they are. I guess my question is, is it, is it going to be possible to release the funds? We're directing it, but I just want to ensure that it's possible to release the funds in the manner that, they've, that they have um, requested in their, in their notes. I, unfortunately, our treasurer's left. I'm assuming it's possible. Jim? Lynn? Is he frozen? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Jim. Oh, right through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we did circulate this report and request uh, to the uh, treasurer, so she's aware of this. Um, we haven't heard, I haven't heard that it's not possible, but we'll certainly do everything we can to uh, work with the CAG Care Initiative as we have in the past and, um, and see that the funding that we budget each year goes through to assist them. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Thank uh, Michael. Thank you, Worship. There's just uh, a couple things. It, it alluded to uh, there being no real policy on cat or uh, pet ownership. I didn't know if there, we've looked at that in the past or if that's something that we need to sort of look at in the future if that con continues to be an, an issue. That would be question one. Jim? Uh, to you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we did look at... Um, the idea of licensing cats in the past. We did quite an extensive amount of research and looked at other municipalities that have attempted it, but in the end, it was council's decision at the time not to uh, pursue that, that it would be too difficult to regulate and enforce. Um, we have worked with the Cat Care Initiative who are primarily, um, as you see in their report, looking at the feral cat population and trying to, um, you know, address that so that the uh, population comes under control. Um, at one point, we did launch a uh, education program for um, the public and uh, about being a good pet owner. Um, we could look at doing something like that again. Uh, I believe the information went out over our website. So the idea is to encourage people that do have pets, and especially we know during COVID, a lot of people have adopted dogs, cats, and other animals. and um, you know, how they need to learn to be responsible for those animals and not um, turn them loose if uh, they grow tired of them. So uh, we, we can look into that again and work with the Cat Care Initiative on something like that. Thank you. Uh, the second portion, so the funding is uh, 15000 and the way it's broken down to uh, send to each of the service providers that they use equals that 15,000, but they're also requesting funds for traps and educational brochures. So I'm just not sure how, if, there, if that was built in uh, with excess funds somewhere or, or how that came out of that 15,000. Through you, Mr. Mayor. So we haven't allocated the funds. We never uh, do that until the report comes through to council and we see how they're requesting it. Um, we'll work with them. Obviously, we have a set amount of $15,000. In the past, it's been directed to the veterinarians they work with for the services provided. Um, it makes sense that they would have some operational expenses like the traps and brochures. 
So we'll work with them to see how they want to allocate the full amount to uh, cover all those various aspects. Okay, thank you. Sorry, all in favor? Thank you. Uh, we're at planning 2021-86, assumption of a portion of a road into the municipal road system Concession Road 3 West, Edgar Road. We resolve the staff report planning 2021-86 from Liz Stillman, planning coordinator, reassumption of a portion of a road into the municipal road system. Concession Road 3 West, Edgar Road, be received for information that the lands described as part of Lot 11, Concession 3, being parts 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 on Plan 39R-14360, a portion of Concession Road 3 West, former Township of Percy, be established and assumed into the Trent Hills Municipal Road System. That the lands described as part of, of Lot 3, Concession 11, being Part 2 on the Plan 39R14349, a portion of Edgar Road, former Township of Seymour, be established and assumed into the Trent Hills Municipal Road System that the applicant's solicitors shall be responsible to see to the registration of the transfer and application under the Land Titles Act RSO 1990 as amended to validate the conveyed lands for road widening with the traveled road as one of prop property identified number PIN to the satisfaction of the municipality, that the applicant's solicitors shall be responsible to see to the registration of the certified that the appropriate bylaws be brought forward for council's consideration. Can I get a mover and seconder for that, please? Moved by Ken, seconded by Rick. Um, all in favor? Hit your button. Just at first glance, when you're, the language of that is confusing. <laughs> Somewhat, you're talking about a property that's in Percy and you're identifying is in Seymour and 3 and 11, 11 and 3. It's, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that they're all coming together at the same time, but uh, hopefully it's legal right. I, I'm sure that, uh, uh, that Jim has uh, got all his I's dotted and T's crossed. Jim? You're on mute, Jim. Thank you for letting me know I was on mute. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you, yes, we'll co correct anything that is required. We always double check and triple check the descriptions that come in with the legal documents to make sure that they uh, line up with what's been approved and that will be acceptable at the registry office. Thank you. We're now at uh, planning 2021-87, uh, an application to stop up, close and transfer a portion of an unopened road allowance, Pond Street, former village of Hastings, be it resolved that staff report planning 2021-87 from Jim Peters, Director of Planning and Development, read the application to stop up, close, and transfer a portion of the unopened road allowance, Pond Street, former village of Hastings, be received for information, and that the exchange and allocation of parts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 on the draft plan of survey as identified in staff report planning 2021-87 be approved. Uh, move and seconder, Ken. Mike, thank you. Michael Metcalf. Thank you, Worship. Uh, Jim, I know we've talked uh, about that part one previously, which um, I'm pretty sure sits over top of the mill pond. What process would uh, it take to return that part one back to the ownership of the mill pond as it, 
that part one over top of water is not going to be able to be used but in any part other than for waterway on the mill pond. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, yes, the Deputy Mayor and I have discussed this. So um, yes, part one does appear to be a water lot. You can see how it's separated from the land by the, uh, by the easement along the shoreline. Um, if it is, if we can confirm that, then uh, the easiest method would be to have it transferred to the municipality, and then we would tr in turn transfer it to the owner of the mill pond. Um, once this uh, survey is registered, it becomes a separate part, and that would be an easy uh, a mechanism to follow through on. So I can certainly follow up with the developer regarding that. Thank you, Jim. My apologies, Your Worship, for the updates of members of council. If members of council want to go into the queue in a certain order, then you can just advance them as oh, we go. Okay. Don't everybody jump in at once. Uh, Michael, it will start. Thank you. Thank you, Worship. Just a couple things. Uh, I was able to be participate in the uh, Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund announcement in Westwood, uh, Aspidel Norwood, with a couple other councillors, uh, MPP David Puccini and other MPPs, premiers, uh, warden of Peterborough County, we're all there, um, to listen to the announcement and the, the great information that the province is coming back and allocating uh, funds into that, into that, uh, the into the fund to be able to do those uh, projects that are desperately needed that we haven't been able to in the last little while. And uh, yesterday, I was also able to watch the installation of a mural in uh, the village of Hastings, um, organized by volunteers of the Hastings Revitalization Association. It's on the uh, side of the Legion, and it's uh, it's looks quite nice and will really add to the park on the corner uh, in, Hast in Hastings there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, also attended with Deputy Mayor Metcalf and Councillor Tully the announcement from Doug Ford. Uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Metcalf, you forgot to mention that the announcement was made on a double lane brand new $1.6 million bridge with roughly the same span of a local bridge in our municipality. Uh, also attended the cornerstone flag raising ceremony, uh, attended the work of Santa Claus parade along with the mayor, which was very well attended, and an ET, EOTA meeting and lower Trent meeting last Thursday. That's all to report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, attended a heritage meeting, and you've seen the results of the discussions at that meeting, and also participated in the Campbellford Santa Claus Parade and attended the Workworth Stationary Parade. Um, both were really good examples of the community spirit that's being shown throughout uh, Trent Hills this Christmas season. Um, unfortunately, I have not been able to find the Hastings Grinch. I've uh, been looking for him, um, although he's been in a number of businesses and Mike claims the suit doesn't fit him, so <laughs> it's not Mike. Um, <laughs> it's also been a really educational uh, last couple of weeks. Um, I started out by participating in an Ontario Library webinar regarding the library accreditation. Um, our library is accredited, but we continue to ensure that we meet those standards and there was a fair bit of information on how we, we can do that. Um, I also participated in in a, in a two day AMO sponsored course entitled Navigating Conflict Relationships as an, edu as an Elected Official. It was excellent. It was um, sponsored by AMO and um, a, a gentleman who has done a great deal of, um, 
of coaching and uh, negotiating and navigating those relationships um, led it. There were about, I would say, 50 elected officials across Ontario. It focused on conflict resolution, mediation, negotiating, and navigating difficult conversations that we may encounter as elected officials. And I'd highly recommend it, and I know that there are two more sessions, one in February and one in April. Um, and it goes very quickly, and it's really interesting, and I can pass that on. Some of you may have had it already come across your, your, um, your, your email. Um, and then finally, a lot of my time has been focused on Conservation Authority business, attended meetings of both Conservation Ontario and the Conser Conservation Ontario Advisory Committee, as well as our own authority meeting, as we scramble quickly to meet the various transition plans. You can see the Lord Trent one that's on today. I believe the Crow and both and the and Orca have both worked on theirs as well. And there are deadlines for December 31st and then again into February. Um, there are questions being posed by the Ontario Advisory Committee that I sit on uh, with respect to how far we will go before the, um, or how far the province will go with this before the election takes place. And uh, there's a fair amount of consultation on that taking place. But the next steps will be to develop programs and services inventories and dealing with the member municipalities. So those of you that are not on a conservation authority, um, there will be a number of things coming across. And I would assume that I know that the Lower Trent and the Crow um, are in touch quite frequently. And um, a lot of I, what I do brings me in touch with Andy Mitchell from Orca. So uh, there's. Um, a lot to come, and, and I know that staff are already aware of this. Um, also, um, there's a lot um, coming down um, in terms of accountability and transparency initiatives that the that the provincial um, organization is looking at so that um, those individuals who are questioning some of the things that are taking place with respect to uh, conservation authorities, it's, it's all on the website. It's all there to be seen and all there to be read and um, there are checklists that are being followed. Um, the final thing is, is something that, that, I'm that I've talked with staff and I will be bringing to the January meeting for some discussion is um, the inquiries that I've had, and maybe you have as well, um, regarding what appears to be at least three cannabis retail stores planning to open in the Campbellfords downtown. They're perfectly legal, they're legitimate, they're able to be there. But there are some questions um, uh, uh, around what we as a willing host in our community know about the stores, the number of stores, and so on. So I've also been in contact with, with AMO and was invited to um, have our municipality or myself, whomever, draft a question to be placed at the Minister's Forum at Roma. So I'm going to bring some information forward. So if people are asking you questions, there is something being done. And there is also a um, private member's bill in front of the provincial government currently that more information is coming on that. So it's just, if people are asking you, the stores are there now, they're identified, and um, there'll be more to come on that. So that's it. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, Jean? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I uh, attended the, participated in the Camelford Christmas Parade and uh, did drive through the one in Warkworth. And uh, we had Lower Trent meeting last week uh, in person, which uh, uh, that has difficulties. I have to, the, the in-person ones are much superior to the virtual. I don't know what uh, is their mechanics of their hookup down there, but Jim or uh, Rick can attest to that. And it's, not everybody comes to the public meeting. They want to be at home, that's fine. But I wish they could get the kinks ironed out of the situation. Uh, I was disappointed that the Premier sent out the notice at 3 o'clock in the morning about attending the thing in the, and, and at 9.30, I was just getting off the bus just like this morning, and, and it wouldn't have been hard to get there anyway, but it was a store deal why they wanted to send it so late. Were they afraid of outsiders coming to harass the Premier? I know that about the, the anti-vaxxers that are around Peterborough that had a parade of their own the other day. I don't know, and it's just disappointing that, that uh, the way it rolled out. Anyway, one of the things I did attend last week was the funeral of Glenn Curl, and he was the Seymour West that's 
in that generation that's passed away and the Crows have been well respected families in the in our community and uh, he was unfortunately he died at the young age of 93 and just very good health an active person he, just a, a delight to ever speak with him and uh, I guess that was the end of my comments sir yeah. Ken Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I did, too attended the Christmas parade in uh, Camelford, and uh, it was certainly nice weather, and uh, it was fun to be in. Uh, I also at attended or attempted to attend the announcement uh, last week at Westwood with the Premier. However, uh, my schedule and the Premier's did not uh, overwork very well. He was late, and I had to leave. But anyways, we did spend a, an hour and a half out there talking to people and uh, attempted to be there for the presentation. Um, later that day, I did come in and attended the retirement party for Sue Gordon and had a piece of cake, and uh, it was nice to chat with somebody with 33, 34 years of service, and uh, I gather she started in the clock tower building and finished in the clock tower building, so I think she'd come full circle, and Warkworth onto the star still continues. I'm still busy picking up trees and branches off my property from the windstorm, and um, just wanted to comment, when I walked in today, the bench out front used to have a name plaque on it, and that name plaque is missing, so I didn't know if that should be attended to. So anyways, uh, those are my comments, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to all. Um, I, uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Mike, Rick, and Ken for, for last Friday morning. Um, as as uh, Jean uh, alluded to, um, the email came through at, I don't know, Two thirty, three o'clock in the morning, and and I guess, <clears throat> you know, I guess I, I think to Gene's comments, uh, they're probably trying to uh, minimize the uh, uh, people that attend as far as uh, protest groups. But um, yeah, it made it tough. I uh, the original the original thing came out, uh, and I thought it was uh, I thought it was the announcement of the bridge going to open because it's been closed all year. And, uh, and I had a county council meeting, so I, I just thought, well, I won't be able to make a, the bridge opening. And then, then it came through that, um, that the premier is going to be there. And I, uh, so I, I thank the uh, deputy mayor and Rick and Ken for making the effort to be there and represent council. Um, as Councillor English alluded to the Thompson Bridge, I will uh, give you a brief update. Um, as, as you all know, county council approved the replacement of the bridge and also the Loomis Bridge in Brighton. Um, this year, the Loomis Bridge uh, is scheduled to be put in because um, they'd already done the design and build, and uh, so they will get started. Um, because of the change uh, from council uh, on the EA, we have to do a 30-day um, notice to the public, and then the, the province has 30 days to to reply. Uh, I think they're going to have to do a hydrological study because of taking out the piers. Um, so the bridge, uh, Thompson Bridge, <coughs> will be replaced probably uh, in 2023. Well, I shouldn't say probably. It will be replaced and uh, the latest it will be replaced is 2023. So um, uh, it's a little longer than I would like and I, I intend to uh, you know, try to keep pushing to get it as fast as we can. But I um, mean, um, the good news is it's going to be there. So uh, that's the Thompson Bridge. Um, to Mike's uh, looting of the mural, um, uh, great work from a you know a community-based organization that uh, uh, is really um, you know focused on helping out the community. And and as the president of the Legion, I can tell you that was a pretty scuzzy-looking building at the back corner. And uh, the new addition really, really does uh, spruce it up, and I, it will be, uh, I'm sure, something that will be uh, seen a lot in the uh, in the municipality. Uh, attended the cornerstone flag raising. Was at the work with the uh, parade with Rick and our uh, MP. Um, uh, attended the Camelford parade. It was great. I uh, got to follow the uh, town crier driving a tractor. I was slightly jealous of him being able to be on the tractor and me walking, but. Uh, and, and, it, and I'd also like to acknowledge that in this past week, Bill White passed away. Um, 
you know, Bill is uh, uh, the father of uh, Scott White, our, our manager of infrastructure, but Bill also was uh, a counselor for two terms. I believe it was two terms, and uh, he was very involved in the community. Um, um, I'm sure he gave me a number of penalties in the, in the ice hockey rink, and uh, uh, I used to love watching him uh, umpire ball, but he was, uh, he was a very dedicated uh, member of the uh, uh, Trent Hills community, and uh, uh, I wish to pass on my condolences to uh, all his family. Um, and also, as uh, alluded, um, I did on I didn't wasn't able to be there on Wednesday for Sue's retirement, but I I got there Friday morning and uh, um, the cake was gone, but I I got a hug and uh, we got to reminisce for a while. I've known Sue since I uh, used to uh, hang out at her father's restaurant up on uh, uh, Bridge Street West, yeah West, and. Uh, so uh, I knew Sue from a young age, and uh, uh, you know, as, as you say, 30, 33 years. Uh, she would have been 34 years in February. Um, so it, it shows you that um, you know uh, we have some great long-term employees, and we wish uh, Sue a great retirement. And carrying on, we will go now to the uh, consent agenda. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Thank you. I pressed the button prior to your report on the Thompson Bridge, actually. And I did have a question. Um, so you, you're about to pass the budget of the county, uh, Mr. Mayor. So there is funds allotted for 2022 in the county budget for Thompson Bridge, because obviously it was all studies and everything. So that will be helpful to some of the people that knowing that there is money in that budget for that. So thank you. Yeah, thanks, Rick. Just, yeah, it, the money, the money's there. Uh, luckily, actually, um, I think we spent that uh, the allotment. We got we got about uh, an extra seven hundred and fifty thousand out of the OCIF funds, <clears throat> and uh, our CEO said that her, her, she happened to hear her phone ping at two thirty in the morning, and uh, she saw that number, so she forwarded the information on to the uh, the head of the. Uh, the acting director at uh, Denise, and uh, also to Glenn Dees, the treasurer, and uh, she's pretty sure that we we did wait till the announcement before we spent it, but we were ready to spend it as soon as the announcement was made. So no, it, it will go forward, and I and I have had some chats with uh, some of the folks living down near the bridge, and uh, they understand the situation. It would be nice if we could build them both in 2022, but uh, by the time we do design and build and all the rest of that stuff. Uh, um, will be, uh, you know, late in the year. So it'll, it'll get done, and I'm, I'm pleased. And I should thank everybody that got involved. I mean, you, you look at uh, over 800 signatures on a petition, uh, the letters that went in, the people that uh, attended council and, and spoke to the situation, uh, it, it made a difference. And, uh, you know, it, I, the one thing I was pleased with was um, when it was, came to council, it was unanimous decision by council to replace those bridges. So it's been nice to see the support from the rest of the county uh, to us. Thank you. So we're at the consent agenda. Uh, announcements of interest to the public. We have posted our office closure for the holiday season of 2021. We've uh, published the 2021 hockey skating schedule and also the 2021-2022 public skating schedule. We have correspondence from the Lower Trent Conservation on uh, the, the Conservation Transition Plan. We have Autonomy Conservation Your Watershed News from December 2021. And we have correspondence from Crow Valley Conservation Authority read their dra draft 2022 budget. Be it resolved that staff rec <coughs> recommendations with respect to consent agendas 9B to 9E be adopted as printed. And a mover and seconder for that, please. Rick, Kathy, thank you. All in favor? Any questions? Oh, there we are. Uh, Kathy. Thank you. It's, it's more of a comment with respect to item um, E, and in particular the uh, CVCA draft budget, the capital. And some of you that may have looked at it a little more closely might have gasped 
when you saw that we were looking at in terms of our total tax requirement and percentage increase for just the capital alone, an 86%, which you think must be a misprint, which is not. But when you look at the budget, the amount, and uh, the size we're dealing with, a slight increase can be a huge percentage um, when we're looking at 54,000 um, out of the budget. It, it doesn't take long to drive that percentage up. I guess my key point is that in a small municipality or a small authority like that, um, what we're asking at is just an increase of $2,500 is what that basically um, the total levy um, results in an additional. And um, the point is that larger CAs where a $10 uh, per capita requirement in the Crow is closer to $60 per capita requirement. So it's the sort of thing that we're struggling with when we start talking to the province about the reductions in their funding and so on. And the key thing that we're working on this year is the flood forecast and the warning upgrades, which are the primary uh, part of our expenditures, plus um, the stop log replacement, which is also just 5,000. But we've got a number of programs there. So I guess when we look at some of these budgets around the conservation authorities and the sort of work that they do, particularly around the flooding and the work that we, the things we see in the West, um, any of these increases, we need to delve more deeply into them. And I guess my point is for some of the individuals as well that have had um, a considerable amount of to say about what's been spent and not spent, um, some of the important line items are there in the capital, and we support that um, just because of the work that's going to be done. So just a couple of points. Thank you. Thank you. Rick? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, uh, Councillor Redden, thanks for that. I think you answered most of the questions. The only thing I didn't see, what effect does it have on Trent Hills from compared to last year to this year? I, f I don't know what our levy was. I forget what it was. And, uh, okay. and it was um, last year was uh, twenty six thousand. Uh, well, with uh, um, this year it will be closer to eight thousand. It's an increase of about twenty five hundred dollars. You could answer that. Thank you very much. <laughs> I had, my finger, I had my finger on the button. That doesn't turn it on, apparently. You got to press it? Uh, all, all in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, communications. Uh, we have correspondence for the noise bylaw exemption request for the United Empire Loyalists for June the 18th, 2022. Be resolved that the correspondence dated December the 3rd, 2021, from Bill Russell. Renoise bylaw exemption request June the 18th, 2022, be received. That request from Bill Russell to discharge a cannon at the end of the grave site ceremony for the War of 1812 veterans at the Warkworth and Stones cemeteries on Saturday, June the 18th, 2022, in accordance with Section 14 of the Trent Hills bylaw be approved or denied, and that the applicant be advised of council's decision under the Director of Legislative Services signature. Would someone like to move, and you would like to move to approve? I move to approve the Big Bang. The Big Bang Theory, seconded by Councillor English. Uh, all in favor? And that's carried. Thank you very much. We, we now go to the motions. <clears throat> Be resolved that bylaw number 2021-099, bylaw number 2021-107, bylaw number 2021-109, bylaw number 2021-113, bylaw number 2021-114, bylaw number 2021-115, bylaw number 2021-116, bylaw number 2021-117. Bylaw number 2021-118, bylaw number 2021-119, be read a first, second, third time, passed properly, signed and sealed by the clerk and mayor. Could I get a mover and seconder for that, please? Moved by Rick, seconded by Kathy. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. 
There are no notions of motion. We not have. Thank you. Uh, bylaw conf confirmation bylaw be resolved that bylaw number 2021-120, a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the council meeting held on Tuesday, December the 14th, 2021, be read a first, second, and third time, signed and, and sealed by the clerk and mayor. Mover and seconder, please. Moved by Jean, second by Mike. Any discussion? All in favor? That's carried. A motion to adjourn. Rick and Kathy, all in favor? That's carried.